I suspected my wife was cheating and having an affair partner, now she might be pregnant. Me, 30M, suspects infidelity of my wife, 28F, on top of a failing marriage my wife, 28F, and I, 30M, have been married for almost two years and were together for 1.5 years before that for a total of roughly over three years. We got married shortly before our son arrived a year and a half ago. Everything was great between us, I know and regret how rushed things went, until my son arrived. My wife got hit with postpartum hard and treated me terribly for about seven months until I finally broke. She was passive aggressive and demeaning and berated me for any and every little thing. Now, I believe I truly am a great, and inexperienced at first, father. I have done everything for my child and wife. However, since our child's birth signs of her being bipolar are very evident, she was great again after getting prescribed Zoloft, and we got along great. She's had several incidences where she stopped taking it, got passive aggressive, and treated me terribly, and she's now unmedicated again. We work mostly opposite schedules and don't get as much time together as we should. She's very controlling, and I need to consult her anytime I need to do something. I usually only go to work and come right home. When she's working, I'm home alone with our son. She works nights Friday slash Saturday nights, so she sleeps all weekend on the nights I'm off. She goes to the bar with co-workers every weekend after work, and I say nothing so she can have a breather and adult time. Now, we have a pretty humor-based relationship, and sometimes it's even at the other's expense, and we have been okay with that. Over the past two months, she has kept joking about her having a black slam piece. To be clear, I only mention race because that's what she says and because it's relevant later. That's fine, whatever. But she keeps on about it, and it's way past the point of being funny. Anyway, on Tuesday night, she was very mad at her mother about something. I didn't come right home after work because I had to run an errand and went home about an hour later than usual. She took this opportunity to claim I came home in a bad mood and berated me. She picked up some overtime planned for that night, 7pm to 12am, in her anger, beyond our joking and in a serious tone, she said, I don't want to go to work. I just want to go out, get drunk, and get me some. I'm tired of being a daughter, a mom, and a wife. That hurt, a lot. Well, it got me thinking even more all the next day, and two days later, Thursday, she had more planned overtime from 7pm to 12am now, my sister-in-law is living with us, because she is down on her luck and in remission from ovarian cancer. We get along great. My wife crawled into my sister-in-law's bed at 3.30am after her shift, smelling like alcohol, and said she went out drinking with Dwight. Dwight is a black security guard at her work. Her shift ended at 12. Bars close at 2am, and she has a 45-minute drive home, the timeline is even more sketchy. My sister-in-law told me about this after my wife left for work Friday night, because she felt like I should know. My wife and I would not have seen each other until Sunday night, tomorrow, due to work schedules. I couldn't handle wandering all weekend, so I went to talk to her at her work that night. I calmly confronted her about coming home late smelling of booze and that she never even told me. She admitted she went to the bar with Dwight and had two beers. I explained how wrong and sketchy it was to me, especially after her comments. She calmly denied cheating on me. I asked her again to swear on our son's life. This caught her off guard, and after five seconds, she did. She went on to tell me how she'd been unhappy for months with me and questioned divorce. She's checked out on being a mom and a wife. She doesn't do anything around the house but plays on her phone all day and ignores our son beyond the required stuff. We don't argue much, but she's usually on a hair trigger, snapping about everyone else for no reason. To make things worse, she texted me earlier that day saying she was 8 days late for her period. Two pregnancy tests came up inconclusive. We've had sex one time in the past month, no birth control, no condom, pulled out, but I know, not foolproof, it makes me wonder if she is pregnant, and is it even mine if so. So here I sit on the verge of divorce. I feel my trust is destroyed, and I can't move past that. She'd flip her shit if I were with a woman alone drinking at night, and I wouldn't do it. Please help validate or argue my feelings of being wronged and doubting my wife. My trust is destroyed, and we may have a baby coming that neither of us will handle well. I feel terrible, but termination crosses my mind. I feel divorce is coming soon because we both consider it. What should I do? Delete Facebook, hit the gym, lawyer up, and see how things go with a potential new baby? I love the son we have, and I know I'll get at least partial custody. We both have good jobs and no sketchy records to tie us up in court. Thanks so much in advance. More info, we never really get alone time, but a few times a month. And yes, she's a saw Monday to Thursday, and kid free for 3 days. I'm only a sod 2 days a week. She gets to cut loose, but I'm a bad guy if I go to the store after work. I give her all the time possible to be kid free and take our son as soon as I'm home, feed him, bathe him, and put him to sleep. She had the chance to change her schedule, and I tried to for the good of us, she declined. I essentially have our son 36 waking hours a week, essentially or fully alone. She spends 40 hours essentially or alone with him. We both suffer the same child burnout without much adult time. I brought up putting our son in child care, 
but she is very lazy and never wants actually to do anything to improve her quality of life. She gets to go out but controls me, so I can't. I think it's all pretty fucked from here, especially since she's being shady. If she weren't being shady and going out with some dude, I'd do everything I could to make it work. I fear it's too late now due to broken trust. I think I now see how messed up and dysfunctional it is, and that gave me the insight to write all of this. Thanks again for your insight, encouragement, kind words, and time. Update, so, first off, my wife denied all cheating and such on the Friday night I confronted her at work. We both worked all weekend and did not see each other because of it until Sunday night. We spoke a few times, and things seemed okay. We were both off the Monday after, and she pulled me into our room away from my sister-in-law to admit she cheated. She's been cheating on me with a 47-year-old co-worker. He has a daughter who is only 4 years younger than my wife. And before anyone asks, she's not pregnant. She has since had her period and negative pregnancy tests. She isn't on birth control, so it's always possible she may end up pregnant from him or someone else, but for my son's sake, I hope not. She claimed this happened one time, and it was the night she was mad at her mom and took it out on me. She claims she did nothing sexual the night she came home late and crawled into bed with my sister-in-law. She's since seen him a few times. She's shown very little remorse both when she told me, and the weeks prior. I consulted with two divorce lawyers within the few days after she told me, but did not disclose this fact immediately. We had a talk and mutually agreed on an uncontested divorce, something I was going to file for anyway. This is in the works, and we have come to terms on property, debt, child care, etc. She'll get the house, she purchased it when we were still fresh into dating. It is hers, and we will share custody of our son. I'm also working on proving her as an unfit parent unless she willingly gives him up. I'm not trying to take his mom away, even if I feel he'd be better full-time with me and only visits from her. She gets no child support or spousal support. That is separate. We have opted to do split costs such as insurance premiums, medications, unpaid medical bills, tuition, extracurricular costs, and any other joint costs required. My son will not want for anything within reason and will be well looked after. I've said many times he is my main priority in all of this in life. I love my son, and he is my motivation. She still continues to try to get me to watch our son overnight so she can go work. She has been manipulative twice to be able to have someone with our son before I get home from work, so I have no choice, I finally snapped at her after being kind and stoic for two weeks. I told her how shitty, manipulative, selfish, and untruthful person she was all around. That I wouldn't do these things to her, and I sure as shit won't be her doormat and let her do it to me. We still cohabitate, but I am packing my things and moving out in the next few weeks. I am going to my parents' house until I pay off the cost of the divorce and decide where I want to move to, within range of my son, she still rarely shows remorse, but I am not shy to call her on her shit. We don't interact much, and when she tries, I usually mostly ignore her. Sometimes, she's playful and flirts with me. I don't buy into it. She's texted me a few times about how sometimes she wants to work things out, and other times she can't stand me. I am fully done with her shit, and she doesn't seem to comprehend that I am filing and done with her. There's no trust or respect for her, and truthfully I hate her. Our son has to be pulled away from me crying when she wants to show him attention when I'm around. He even prefers my sister-in-law over my wife, usually unless he wants to nurse. My wife still mostly ignores him and plays on her phone. In the meantime, I'm hitting the gym and trying to maintain my sanity. I do fine during the day, but the darker thoughts creep in at night. I do my best to stave it off, but it's hard when it prevents you from sleeping. I'm just riding the waves of it all until I reach better days. Depression is definitely present, but I am focusing on my one and a half year old son, as he is all that matters in this. I love him very much. Thanks to everyone for their time and that final push I needed to be strong and get my divorce going. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Caught my wife cheating with our son's college buddy, later on I divorced her. I, 47M, and my wife, 46F, had been married for 17 years when we got divorced. I met her in college. We were good friends at first, but after a while, I developed a bit of a crush on her and I asked her out. We dated for a few years before she ended up getting pregnant. When our son was 3 years old, we ended up getting married. In total, we've been together for 23 years. Throughout all of the years we had been together I thought we were happy and in love. We watched all of our friends go through countless struggles with their relationships while we remained steady throughout everything. The only issue that ever really arose for us was the fact that my wife liked the attention of other men. It was something that I felt insecure about at first, but over the years I had gotten used to it. As far as I was aware, she never did anything with other men, but she would get dressed up to go places because she knew she would be catching their eyes. She would flirt with bartenders or waiters to get free things at restaurants. She told me that it made her feel confident and sexy and after giving birth and getting a bit older, she was having issues with her confidence. I did everything in my power to assure her that I thought she was the most beautiful woman on the planet. She just wanted to be desired by other people. It made her feel like she had this feminine power and she didn't want to lose it. My wife was very good looking. She took care of herself, going to the gym regularly, 
taking care of her skin and hair, and wearing clothes that aligned with the latest trends. I always thought that I was very lucky to have her. We only had one child together, our son. Sending him off to college was difficult for my wife and me. We had gotten so used to him being around the house that everything felt empty without him there. It was a hard pill to swallow, but he was moving on with his life and there wasn't anything we could do about it. When we dropped him off the first semester of his freshman year, I was very aware that his roommate was surprised at how his mother looked. My wife caught on to that as well. On the car ride home, she kept laughing about how she felt like the hottest girl in the world. We made jokes about it, and I never thought anything would really come of it. His university was a six-hour drive away from us, so when we went to pick him up at the end of the fall semester I kind of assumed that my wife would dress for a road trip. We were going to be on the road for 12 hours and it was probably expected to be wearing sweaters and comfortable pants, things like that. Instead, she got dolled up to go pick our son up. She wore tight jeans and a t-shirt that exposed a lot of her cleavage. She was wearing makeup and she curled her hair in the morning. I didn't quite understand why she was making such an effort to go pick him up. Part of me knew that it was because she wanted the boys in his dorm to pay attention to her and it kind of weirded me out. Thankfully, when we arrived a lot of the students had already left for the winter break so she didn't get as much of the validation that I thought she wanted. However, our son's roommate was still there. He was very clearly attracted to my wife and he kept staring at her while we were helping my son pack his things. It was honestly something that I was considering addressing with her when we got home, but my son beat me to it. On the car ride back, he told my wife that he wasn't happy with how she dressed around some of the guys in his college. She promised him that she would make sure to cover up in the future, almost shrugging it off like it was a joke in some ways. I could see that my son was actually embarrassed by how his friends reacted to her. I didn't like that she was playing it off like it wasn't a big deal. When we got home later that evening, I continued the conversation with her. I told her that it was starting to make me uncomfortable and she was acting somewhat defensive about it. Instead of getting into an argument, we both just dropped it and figured we would deal with it when the time came in the future. A couple of years passed and our son was a junior in college. Regardless of how my wife dressed going to pick him up and drop them off, some of his friends and roommates still made comments about how she looked. She listened to what we said and stopped wearing such revealing clothes, but it didn't help. At the end of his junior year, we went to help him move out of his apartment off campus. We drove to the university and helped him load everything into my truck as we always did. He was living in an apartment with three other guys, one of whom was the roommate that he had during his freshman year. On the car ride back, he asked us if it was okay for one of his friends to come visit for a week. There was a film festival nearby that they both wanted to go to and I said that it would be fine. My wife agreed with that. A few weeks passed while our son was home and we were drawing closer to his friend coming to visit. In those weeks, my wife was on her phone a lot more than she normally was. She was texting with someone and every now and then I would hear her on the phone whispering. I had no idea who she was talking to. One night, my wife was in the shower and I went in to brush my teeth. I saw through the glass shower door that she had her phone in the shower with her and she was recording herself. She stopped when I walked in, but it was obvious what she was doing and denied it when I said it looked like she was recording herself. Our son's friends came to visit for the week as we expected and everything started out normal. I could see that he was extra nice to my wife because he was obviously attracted to her. I figured that my son would be with him during the day, so it never occurred to me that my wife would have any alone time with him. We had a pool at our house that my wife used quite often. In the summer months, she would swim in it regularly for exercise, as well as use it for recreation. I came home from work one day and I saw my wife outside in a very small bikini with our son's friend. They were both in the pool, playing around with each other and splashing water in each other's faces. They kept diving under the water and grabbing each other to pull them under. It looked like they were just looking for an excuse to touch each other. Neither of them noticed me coming right away, so I hid from them. I didn't want them to see me because I was curious about what exactly was happening with them. We had cameras in the backyard, so instead of going outside, I went into my office and logged in to watch the cameras live. Neither of them had any idea that I was home, much less watching them. Up, my wife looked around the pool area to make sure the coast was clear then kissed him again. I could faintly hear what they were talking about through the audio, but they were saying something about how glad they were to finally have some time alone. Right after that, my wife started touching him and reaching inside his swim trunks. He said something about not being sure they had the time, but my wife told him that she thought it was even hotter because of that. They finished what they were doing and my wife told him that she would visit him in the guest room after I went to bed. My gut had told me that there was something going on with her that I didn't know. I hated seeing that I was right to think that. We had been together for a very long time and I trusted her more than anyone in the world, and she broke that. I didn't know if they had slept together already, but it was clear that they were planning on it. What they did in the pool was already cheating, but they were about to take it even further. They both toweled off and went inside, and I quickly turned off the footage and made it look like I was busy doing something for work. My wife walked by the office and commented on how she had no idea I was home. I tried to cover my emotions and play it off like I had just walked in the door. She came to me about an hour later and told me that it was time for dinner, but I lied and told her I wasn't feeling well and was just going to focus on work instead. 
I couldn't stomach being around her. I knew that I was going to catch her in the act with our son's friend later that night, and I didn't think I was going to be able to pretend to be okay with everything. All I needed was to get the evidence to prove that she was having an affair. I pretended to go to sleep around the time that I usually did. My wife climbed into bed next to me and stayed there for about half an hour while I pretended to sleep. When she thought I was completely out, she quietly climbed out of the bed and left. I waited about five minutes and made my way to the guest room that they were both in. They were clearly trying to be quiet on the other end, but I could hear the squeaking of the bed frame underneath them. I pulled out my phone camera and started recording so I could open the door quickly and have the video evidence that I caught them. I opened the door and saw my wife naked and on top of our son's friend, having sex with him. They were both shocked when I opened the door and my wife quickly jumped off of him to run over to me. I had already started walking away from the room when she caught up to me. She was trying to whisper and be as quiet as possible about the entire ordeal to avoid waking up our son, but I yelled back at her. I told her that I didn't understand how she could do that, especially with our son's friend. It didn't take long for our son to wake up and stand in his doorway, asking us about what was going on. I looked at my wife and waited for her to explain to him what she'd been doing. When she told him what happened, my son rushed into the room where his friend was and tried to attack him. He yelled at him and called him a myriad of names that I can't repeat here. I ended up breaking them up and taking my son out of the house because he was so frustrated. I understood where he was coming from but I didn't want him to get in trouble. We were gone for about an hour, just driving around and letting off some steam. When we got back to the house, his friend was gone. He'd packed all of his things and driven off. My son yelled at his mother, telling her that what she did was wrong and she should have been ashamed. She cheated on a man who had stood by her for almost 25 years for somebody half her age. My wife ended up realizing that there wasn't going to be a way to smooth over what she did, so she left the night and booked herself a hotel room. In the morning, I had a conversation with my son to tell him that because of what happened I would be leaving his mother. He completely understood and he told me that if I hadn't gone to him about it he would have suggested it himself. I could see that my son was almost as hurt as I was about everything. Not only was his mother cheating and their parents getting divorced, but one of his best friends was now out of his life because of it. I felt immensely bad for him and I couldn't believe that his mother would do something like that to him. I started the divorce proceedings and prepared myself for anything that might come my way. My son told his other roommates about what happened and that he didn't want to live in an apartment with his old friend anymore. Because they were renting an apartment off campus, they agreed that they wouldn't be living with him. They sent him a message and told him that he would have to find another housing option. When it got closer to time to drop my son back off at school, we realized that his friend had to move back into on-campus housing. Because it was so last minute, he ended up living with a nightmare roommate who couldn't find anybody else to live with him. On top of that, the on-campus housing was almost twice as expensive as renting an apartment off campus as they planned. So, he was forced to take out several extra loans to cover the cost. Having had to pay off my own student loans, I knew that was going to bite him in the butt for quite some time. As for my wife, we did get divorced. She didn't work, she was a homemaker so she was forced to get a job and start taking care of herself. I was awarded the house and I ended up selling it because I didn't need everything that was in there. I bought a much smaller house in a different neighborhood with enough room for my son and me. He seemed to really like it when I showed it to him over the winter break. Now, he has graduated college and I am living in the new house by myself. My son is living in an apartment by himself in the city for his job. It's been about a year and a half since everything happened and I'm trying to get myself back out there. I spent almost 25 years with my ex-wife and I don't know how to date moving forward. 